Hello, children. Welcome to you all, whether you be from the lower classes, the middle class, or from we whom God has ordained must take on the mantle of responsibility and leadership over those less intelligent and well-bred. You see, it does not matter which class you belong to, as long as you stay there. There is a certain order to life, and that natural order must be adhered to. Put it down, maid. Put it down! Oh. Now, children, this tale of uplift and moral improvement concerns a little girl who thought she could go against this most unshakable of society's foundations. Sarah Smith was a clever little girl, which was unusual for her type. However, she was also common, and therefore, quite rightly, had worked as a seamstress since the age of three. But unfortunately, as she grew, she began to do that most wicked of things the working class might do. She began to think and get ideas above her station. Those children playing outside. How happy they seem flying their kite. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to play in the fresh, clean air, to fly freely like a kite over the park? Oh, God. They simply wanted a nice pair of shoes and a lovely bonnet and all. Yes, Mike, yes. I should like all of those things. What keeps us shackled here in this garret ten hours a day, stitching these clothes, never seeing the sun? Cos they's toffs, and we ain't. And that's life. Mrs Timney, would it be possible to play outside, Smike and I, just for a short while? Just to feel the sun on our faces? You see, there's Toffs and there's us. And that's the end of it. Oh no, Smike. That is the beginning. The hot summer came along, and every day the lovely children could be seen from the window playing outside. But every day, Sarah watched and dreamed until she could bear it no longer. I don't care anymore, Smike. I'm going. I'm going to play with those children. Just for once, I will be like them. But, Mrs Timney, she's an ape. I no longer care. She can arm my body, but my mind is as free as that kite they fly over London. Wait. Wait, Miss Sarah. If, if anything should happen to you, I... I don't think I could bear it. Wait a moment. I shall, I shall take that bundle of clothes downstairs and drop them in front of Mrs Timney, soiling them. She'll beat me for hours. But then you'll have enough time to play with the posh children. You, you would do that for me, Smike? If you wish it, I would. I would do anything for you. Just, just promise me you'll come back. Smike, I promise. Now go. I can wait no longer. Oh, Smike, thank you. Rich or poor, I'm sure the children will not begrudge one more playmate. Get away. Leave us alone. She touched me. She touched my arm. Help! I only want to play. What does she mean? I can't understand her. Constable! Constable! Oh, horror! Horror! And children, at this moment you may be forgiven for presuming that the girl may have become resentful, to have started to doubt the justice and wisdom of the English class system. In fact, you may have expected her to fall under the spell of a certain Mr. Karl Marx. But it is a credit to the otherwise misguided child that she realised that this went against God's natural ruling. Working class people seizing the means of production. Can, I mean, can, can you imagine working class people running factories? Playing cricket? 
appearing in the Cambridge Footlights Review? <laughs> Neither can I. It was now clear to Sarah that there was more to being well-bred and civilised than simple good nature. Sarah thought she would need to improve her accent. And indeed, learn good ma- Will you put it down on the table, please? No, not please, just do it! Sarah, as we were saying, Sarah for a while believed that she could teach herself. Good day, Mrs Timney. May I say how delightful you are looking this morning? Sarah realised she could not do it on her own. She would require lessons, but how was she going to pay for these lessons? Unknown to her, Sarah's deliverance was at hand. And the source of her salvation? <laughs> the wretched fool who loved her more than all in the world. The simple, good-hearted Smike. Smike! Oh, Smike, wherever did you get it? I don't... in the street. It doesn't matter. You've given me the chance to become a lady. Go, Miss Sarah. Go and be a lady. Oh, I will never forget you, dear, dear Smite. Not that way! And at last, she found herself at the place she had always dreamed she would be. Professor Henry Harrison. The man whose teachings could raise a flower seller to a duchess at the right price. So, my dear, you wish to deport yourself in society, speak the Queen's English? Yes, sir. Let me explain my method. First, you must move into my house, be drilled in the rules of etiquette, attend the opera, ballet and ascot, not necessarily in that order, sing the odd song at regular intervals, have a dislike for me as I treat you badly, which gradually turns to mutual admiration until you finally fall deeply in love with me. Yes, sir, I understand. <laughs> then we shall begin immediately. Ah, let me relieve you of that heavy burden. Now. Repeat after me. In Hartford, Hereford and Hampshire, poor people aren't allowed. In Hartford, Hereford and Hampshire... The lessons began and little Sarah Smith proved a quick and diligent student. In fact, Professor Harrison had never encountered a pupil so eager to learn. Sarah's coarse vowels were refined, her grammatical ignorance corrected, her deportment improved, and her manners polished. Until, at last, one afternoon in July. I am ready. I am a woman. Indeed you are. Goodbye, my dear. Not in the street. Lucinda, my arms are too weak to hold the string. Well, I shan't help you. You, girl, help me with this kite. Certainly not. I am no servant. Ah! Would you like to play with us? I'm flying a kite. Well, I was. Wait, you're to Marshall Sims. She may just be posing as one of our class. Where do you school? You are an impertinent child, aren't you? Oh, 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 Miss Sarah! Oh, it's you! Oh, why, ain't you the lady now? How dare you address me, you jumped up little gutter snipe! Who are you? Why, the nerve! Oh, oh, it's, it's me! Spike! Get away from me, you stinking oaf! Lord Todd Marshall Sims, would you be so kind as to call a constable? 
Wretches like this should be kept away from decent society. You! Off! Off, I say! Constable! Constable! Well, Miss Sarah, you did it! You've become posh! I love you. The faint. Oh, the stench. You are one of us, after all. Welcome. Indeed. Sarah had passed herself off as a lady. The upper-class children played and Sarah joined them. They took her in as one of their own. Sarah's accent was perfect, her knowledge of manners impeccable. However, as is always the case, one mistake would be enough for the devil inside to be exposed. Evil will always reveal itself. Always. Oh, how I love to fly the kite. The feel of the wind, the freedom. Oh, Sarah, I'm so glad you came to play. You're so refined. So well-bred, so posh. Am I? Oh, Lord told me I shall sin. In fact, damn it, I'm only 12 years old, but... Sarah, will you marry me? I know Peter will approve. You seem of such good breeding stock. Marriage? Where? Yes, due to interbreeding, all the other society girls have haemophilia, elephantiasis, or a Hasberg chin. So will you marry me? Will you become Lady Todd Marshall Sims? Why, sir, I'm honoured, but... Yes. Yes, of course I will. I'm so happy. Look. I'm crying. Oh, we must celebrate with breakfast. Get the butler here at once. Oh, where is the wretched fool? We must have kedgeree. Kedgeree? <laughs> what on earth is that? <laughs> you mean to say... You have never eaten kedgeri. She doesn't know what kedgeri is. She doesn't know? She doesn't know. She doesn't know? She isn't one of us. She isn't upper class at all. She's common. Imposter! How dare she! No, please. I only wanted to play. I only wanted to fly the kite. Sarah Smith did not know her place and had to be punished. Her nose was blooded, her dress torn, but it did not stop there. Oh no, an example had to be made. Sarah! The wronged children had tied Sarah to their kite and flown the evil child about the slums of the East End as an example to all those who, who thought it might be a good idea to get about their station. Or after them. Enjoy this tale of uplift and moral improvement, children? I did. So please remember, if you are from the working classes, shut up, stop whining, and live with it. Good night. <laughs>